Sunday. See the latest in lipwear in South America and watch out for the snake in the grass on Ripley's Believe It or Not, then. Joey's here. A killer robot traps Matt Houston in a life-size video game. Then. Yeah, I'm back. He had a shattered past. Now, Steve Martin is the jerk. That's right. Be sure and watch for Adventure and Fun Sunday here on ABC. One life to live. I can't wait to get you out in South Hampton and see what kind of towns you've got. Now, Asa, I don't do anything that I don't want to do. Asa! And on the edge of night, Sky is framed and Raven is his last chance. I can't spy on Ian Dever. Ian is not going to believe me unless I'm very intimate with him. One life to live. The edge of night. Weekdays. The People's Court. Today at 4.30. This information is for you only, Mr. Whitney. We believe that uh, your friend, Ian Devereaux, is a professional spy, and he's protecting himself by throwing you to the wolves. What the hell are you talking about? You heard correctly. Listen, if Cameron or anyone in his department suspects somebody of having those documents, it'd be Ian Devereaux, not you. Well, then what the hell are you putting me through 24 hours of pure hell? I mean, I had visions of myself standing up in front of a firing squad. Oh, please don't misunderstand, Mr. Whitney. You're not in the clear yet. After all, we did find those documents in your wall safe. The evidence still points to you and Devereaux being partners in crime. I hadn't seen Ian since... since we were kids together. We know about your recent reunion here in Monticello, but hey, I mean, you two could have met in Europe many times over the years. I'm telling you, we didn't. We already know how clever Mr. Devereaux is, Mr. Whitney. Perhaps you deserve the same high marks. Yeah, you're the ones who are being clever. You're getting me to talk about this without the aid of legal counsel. Now, wait a minute. That's not our intention. If you want to call your attorney, go ahead. You know, I... I can't do that. I can't let this sort of thing out. I mean, the suspicion that, that I'm being accused of treason? I mean, even a hint of that could practically ruin me. Well, then give us a hint of how to prove that what we suspect about Devereaux is true, that he's framing you. I don't know if I can. We were friends together in Europe, but after we were teens, we really didn't see each other anymore. I certainly had no idea what he did with his later life, as you say, that he was some kind of spy. Did you know that Ian Devereaux is also a friend of Jefferson Brown's? Oh, of course I didn't know that. But we're convinced that uh, Devereaux met Brown in that clinic in Lucerne, that he made contact with him for the specific purposes of buying the phone book. Phone book? What's a phone book? We refer to it as the phone book, Mr. Whitney. It's a directory of all the CEA agents who work undercover uh, in every country throughout the world. Good Lord. We think that that's when he handed over a sample page from the book in order to prove that he had it. The same sample we found in your wall safe yesterday. You mean the same sample that was planted there by Ian? You would have had to have been a magician to open your safe without a combination. What? Maybe he got the combination from Jeff Brown. I mean, you said the two of them were friends. Brown was dead. I certainly had no reason to change the combination. Well, anything is possible, Mr. Whitney, including the fact that you may simply be a spy and a traitor. I know what you're doing. First you suspect Ian. And then you suspect me. And then you suspect me together with Ian. You two fellows are on a fishing expedition. You're just trying to get a conviction. You don't care who... Let me get that. I don't want us to be interested. Yeah, why don't you get that, Chief? Maybe it's another member of my international spy ring. Maybe it's Matahari. It is. Oh, no. You guys just leave him alone. He didn't spy on anybody.
Edge of Night is brought to you by Dawn, the dishwashing liquid that takes grease out of your way. And by Sunshine Fresh, Mr. Clean. He helps keep no wax floors shining bright. Oh, now my kitchen really shines. This new no wax floor really looks good in here. Mm hmm And I'm going to keep it looking good for this. Uh, those one-step acrylic cleaners may not be the best thing for it. But they're the latest thing for no wax floors. But why don't you use Mr. Clean to help bring out the shine? Even Armstrong approves of Mr. Clean for use on their solarian no wax floors. What makes Mr. Clean so good at bringing out a shine? Well, here, let me show you. If you could lift the shine off a no-wax floor, you'd see that one-step acrylic cleaners can trap in dirt and cover the shine. But Mr. Clean lifts away dirt to bring out the shine. You're right. When it comes to a clean shine, the latest isn't the greatest. <laughs> the Mr. Clean shine is the shine of approval. Lasagna for breakfast? Oh, Mom. It's a slumber party. Oh, okay, but you will clean up all that grease. Ew, gross. No, Dawn. Ugh. Finished. Uh-uh, forgot a glass. You forgot it, you wash it. After that greasy pan? Try it, John will handle it. The water doesn't feel greasy, and neither do my hands. And this glass looks as good as the first one you washed. Look, add half a cup of grease to Dawn dishwater. Dawn breaks up grease, takes it out of your way, helps keep it away, so dishes come out clean. Dawn's great. So, if lasagna's breakfast, what's dinner? Cornflakes. <laughs> Dawn takes grease out of your way. Yes, Dr. Kavanaugh. This is Cooper. Uh, this evening. Uh, well, I don't, hold on a second, would you? Just, just hold on. Uh, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. I'm, uh, I have no office help at the moment, so I'm doing everything myself here. Look, it looks uh, fine. I'm, I'm clear. I'm going to be here for another hour, at least. All right. Yeah. Uh, we'll see you then. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Cooper. What are you doing here? What is it? You're on your way to the studio? Yes. Mm. I just thought I'd drop by to see if you needed any help. I can see that you do. This place is a wreck. Uh, you're in the nick of time. I'm looking for a report. Uh, it has a red cover. I just had it in my hand. I answered the phone. Here. Oh, you're a lifesaver. <laughs> You've done it before. What would I do without you? I cannot imagine. But I know you can't manage like this much longer. Do you have any new prospects for an office nurse yet? Well, I have uh, two candidates coming for interviews tomorrow. Oh, good. I'll be all right. Just need a little organization here. Honey, you look very tired. Why don't you go home and go to bed? I'm going to. I just have one new patient now this evening, then I'm going to go. I shouldn't be this tired. You know, it wasn't that long a day at the hospital, remember? And then two patients called and canceled their appointments this afternoon, both of them women. <laughs> I suppose they heard what a monster I am. That's not funny. No, I know it's not. I'll just be so grateful when this whole thing is forgotten. Do you think that this is affecting your practice? No, 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 no. I'm sure, the cancellations are just coincidence. Don't, don't worry about it, please. I won't if you won't. Um, I have a confession to make. I went to see Barbara Montgomery. To see Barbara Montgomery. Why did you do that? Because I just, I thought. Because that you it... thought what? You knew it wasn't going to do you any good. Well, you're right, it didn't. She's absolutely convinced that she's telling the truth. In fact, she's beginning to embellish on her lie. Oh, really? It wasn't good enough as it was? Apparently not. The story's just getting wilder and wilder. She says now that, that you fired her because she rejected your proposition. <laughs> this is incredible. I know it. I know it. I told her. I said, you're lying. <sighs> then she pulled another rabbit out of the hat. There's more. She started talking about Tammy Dryden. Well, now that doesn't surprise me, because I suspected all along Barbara was eavesdropping probably right here at this door when Tammy came to ask for a job. It's not important. It isn't? No, because I know Tammy, of all people, will not back up that stupid story. Yes, but you never thought Barbara would turn against you either. 
Wait a minute. You're not beginning to believe any of it, are you? Oh, Miles. Oh, honey. Oh, come on. How can you even ask me that? Oh, come on. Please. Now, look. I have to go deliver the public their news, and you have another appointment, so I'll see you later, okay? Sure. Doctor, quite a surprise hearing from you. Uh, listen, I will make this brief. I wondered if I could stop by on my way home and talk to you just for a few minutes. Sure. I mean, that's fine with me, Miles. I'll be home all night. Drop by any time. I mean, even if it's late. Okay. I'll see you then. Bye. I had a hunch he'd be around sooner or later. Well, make yourself useful, will you? Close that one. Oh, sure. Where in the hell do you think you're going, anyway? Who knows, and who cares? Come on, Poppy. You can't keep running away from things because you don't know how to handle it. Look, big boy, it makes sense, doesn't it? I stayed long enough to try. I did what I could. I, I went to Eddie, and I asked him to do one last favor for me. The truth about Troy Bannister, but he just couldn't see his way clear to grant it, okay? So that's his problem and not mine. He couldn't see his way clear? Poppy, that little weasel owes you a lot. You know, your brother would still be alive if it weren't for Eddie Lorm. Look, Damien, I don't need you to remind me about that. That's something that's just between Eddie and me and not the cops. And he's been trying to make up for that ever since, too. Right, but it's too much to ask him to tell the truth about Troy Bannister? I did my best, believe me, so why don't we just drop the subject, okay? How you doing, kid? It sneaks up on you, grabs you, shakes you. <laughs> the uncontrolled cough. But today there's Benelin to quiet coughs quickly, effectively, without a prescription. Doctors have introduced Benelin to families for over 30 years and recommend it in the same full strength more than any other cough suppressant you can buy. The strength of Benelin, available without prescription, from Park Davis. Introducing Michelle, one of this year's most exciting young artists. Michelle's in a blue mood today because she's wearing a saggy diaper that leaks. Well, here's Huggies, Michelle. Huggies are form-fitting disposable diapers with soft, gentle elastic to help stop leaking. So Huggies hug to help keep babies dry and comfortable. Thick, absorbent Huggies diapers help keep babies dry and help Michelle go from a blue mood to where she's tickled pink. Listen, I didn't know you had company. Maybe I ought to come back some other time. No, 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 no. Oh, wait a minute, Eddie. Come on in. Now, don't let me stop you, Eddie. Well, you never have before, copper. Look, I just came by to say goodbye, that's all. That's nice of you, thanks. Where's the presents? It wasn't time for that. Eddie knows the present I want, but it's not the kind you can gift wrap. Hey, you know, I've tried to do everything I could in the past before that. You know that, right? I mean, this is just one thing that uh, I can't do. It's just crazy, that's all. What's crazy about it? She wants me to stand up in a courtroom and tell the whole world that I'm a crook. She wants me to tell them that I have cops going around that I pay off doing my dirty work. She wants me to tell them that I've got guys going around looking to beat up nice little girls like Jody Travis. Come on, I just couldn't do anything like that. Now, I can see why you're so reluctant. Hey, look, I wouldn't be able to hold my head up in this town anymore. Now, I don't know whether you guys realize it or not, but I've got a lot of good things going for me for once in my life. And I mean good things. I got a nice restaurant. I got a, I got a good partner, a terrific person, Sid. I mean, I'm working very hard. I'm trying to be legit. For the first time in my life, I'm, I'm getting a little respect. You want me to take all of that and just throw it right down the drain? Is that what you want? Come 
on, you guys. Give me a break, will you? Look, if you'd face up to this and tell the truth about it, you'd not only keep Troy Bannister from spending the rest of his life in prison, but you could hold your head up in this community. Hell, you could hold your head up in any community. Give it a try, Eddie. Maybe the last time you get to join the human race. He's right. Listen to what he's saying, will you? He'd be proud of yourself, Eddie. Look, I... And I'd be proud of you, too. I'll bet your partner would be proud of you, Eddie. You really think so? Sure. I think she'd probably open up a bottle of champagne. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, go for it, Eddie. Just talk to her. See what she has to say. I mean, lay the whole thing right out there in front of her. And she is my partner. If she says it's okay, maybe it is. That's things! Nefertiti! Cleopatra! Right! Oh, you're good at your race, fam. And now she's great at coffee. Uh, great coffee is easy, Mrs. Olsen. You said Folgers would prove it. Sure, Folgers is different. A special blend. Best I've tasted. Mountain grown? That means great flavor because it's the richest kind of coffee. Honey? Yes. Well, sounds like... Sounds like... Oh, 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 more Folgers coffee! Great coffee's easy, and mountain grown Folgers proves it. Inside every Duncan Hines brownie, there's a deep, dark difference. Sure looks chocolatey. Mm. <laughs> How's it taste? Deep, dark, and delicious. Goodness! The deep, dark difference in a Duncan Hines brownie is its chocolatey moistness. Compared to another leading mix, ours are chocolatier and moister. Try one. Well. Deep, dark, delicious. <laughs> Duncan Hines brownies. Deep, dark, and delicious. Since when did my safeguard become the incredible shrinking soap? Since I started jogging, Dad. You can't beat safeguard's deodorant protection. Connie? Since I started working, dear. It smells so clean and fresh. But what's wrong with your deodorant soaps? They just don't have that combination of great deodorant protection and rich lather like safeguard does. The incredible shrinking soap. It's the price you pay for being best. <laughs> safeguard, the smallest soap in the house. Dr. Kavanaugh? Oh, yes. I'm Mrs. Cooper. Yes. You spoke earlier. Of course. Floor. Come on in. Come on in. Sit down, please. Thank you. I'm sorry that there's nobody to greet you out there. I'm shy of office uh, help uh, for a day or yes, two. Yes, so you said. Now, uh, I suppose you could just fill that. You don't mind answering a couple of questions, do you? No, certainly. Uh, well, your name we have. Uh, address? 22 Clark Street. 22 Clark Street. Marital status? There's still a Mr. Everett Cooper around. At least I see him at the breakfast table now and then. Ah, sounds like a busy man. He's in medicine, too. Haven't you heard of him? Ah, uh, no, I guess I haven't. Uh, your age? Will you settle for over 21? No, I won't. <laughs> oh, I didn't think you would. 41, then. 41. And may I ask who referred you to me? Oh, I was visiting a patient at Monticello Hospital yesterday. She pointed you out and recommended you highly. Really? What's her name? Mrs. Charles Baldrige. Florence. Baldrige. I don't, uh, I don't recognize the name. Am I supposed to know her? Perhaps not. But she knows you, Dr. Cavanaugh. In fact, from what people tell me, you're a very special kind of doctor. And that's exactly what I need right now. Uh, I don't quite follow. Well, you see, I've been experiencing a good deal of fatigue lately. I just feel so listless all the time. Well, I don't think there's anything radically wrong with me, physically. In fact, I'm beginning to realize my problem may be more psychological than physical. Oh, well, now we're all beginning to realize more and more that emotions play a definite part in our health. But oh, as no, far I'm as not I... talking about psychosomatic illness. I'm talking about certain psychological impulses yes but, uh, you see still I, I think you probably are uh, at the wrong doctor's office I am not a psychiatrist I'm a general practitioner I am not the kind of doctor that you need oh but I think that you are in fact I hear that you're quite a specialist oh Mrs. Cooper you've made a big mistake not from what I hear 
In fact, everybody in the hospital knows the truth about you, Dr. Kavanaugh. Don't you realize that? Only I'm not going to be one of those women patients who intend to complain. Well, then I suggest you take your non-complaint somewhere else. Raven, it's obvious from your behavior tonight, you know exactly what's going on here. You want to tell us how you came to find out? Before you do that, Miss Alexander, you should be aware of how serious the situation is. If you do have any information, it's highly privileged. Well... It's all right, Raven, just tell them the truth. I was eavesdropping. Great. When you gentlemen elbowed your way in here, Raven was upstairs in the bedroom. She heard us coming up the stairs and went to hide in the bathroom. She knows what went on. She knows that I opened the safe and what you people found, and she heard the ensuing conversation. Why don't you make such a big secret out of it? Why don't you come out and just make yourself known? Hey, look, you were the two that just burst into the bedroom. I was invited. I was in a rather compromising position, and I couldn't very well just walk out into the room now, could I? So I kept quiet. Oh, uh, I... I guess that's understandable. Must have been very difficult for you to keep quiet and mind your own business. Oh, shut up, Derek. Don't be so smug. It was a frightening experience sitting there and listening to you two make stupid accusations. The thought that Sky is a spy is insane. Uh, well, since you were there, Miss Alexander, obviously you overheard everything. You know how very incriminating the evidence is. Well, I don't believe it. It's a mistake. You're very positive of that. Yes. I am positive of Skye's innocence. Well, that's commendable. Since you know so much, Miss Alexander, you may as well know the rest. It will help clarify our position and uh, explain how the investigation led directly into Mr. Whitney's bedroom. A uh, diagram of the bedroom was found in the possession of a known spy. The sketch indicated the exact location of Mr. Whitney's wall safe. Mr. Whitney was the only one who had access to that safe. And when we opened it, you know what we found. Raven, you know we are trying to find out if it's possible Ian Devereaux is responsible for all this. Wait a minute. You mean Raven knows about Ian too? I'm going to have to get you one of those little striped railway engineer caps, Ian. That's just what you need to complete the picture of a contented eight-year-old. <laughs> Come on, Camilla. This is much more complicated than it looks. It's not strictly a child's toy. This is a collector's item. I'm not criticizing, dear. I'm just commenting on the fact that I haven't seen you this happy since you were a little boy. Well, I am happy. I can't remember ever having felt so much at peace with the world. My dear brother, to what do you attribute this lovely euphoria? I am close to attaining two things I want most in life. I think I know what one of them is. You want to marry the beauteous Raven Alexander. The lady you disapprove of. No, oh, I don't disapprove, Ian. I just worry, that's all. So what's the other thing you want most to attain? The other thing would make it all perfect and complete. To get my hands on a certain document would make me a rich and happy man for the rest of my life. All I need now is to find the right track. You know, Ann, I had my physical today. Oh? Doc says everything's great, and I have a lot to thank you for. Really? Really. When I stopped smoking, mm -hmm. when I had to lose those 20 pounds, mm -hmm. cut down on fats and cholesterol, mm -hmm. you made it all so easy. For years, Dick and Ann have followed a low-fat, low-cholesterol diet, and Fleischmann's margarine has been part of it. Fleischmann's margarine, 100% corn oil, 0% cholesterol. And <laughs> you're terrific. On All My Children. If you think that you're going to forget all about me, you're wrong. That's what you would hope, isn't it? And it tears me apart to think of you over the cliff somewhere. All My Children, weekdays. All right, now that it's out in the open and we all know what we all know, maybe you'd like me to give you a little background as to how this all got started. Well, I sure so would like some. Do you mind, David? Oh, not at all. All right, let's start with the Foley's. They were working for Ian Devereaux. It was no accident that you wound up in his home. 
That's hard to believe. They were interested in the diary that came out of the safety deposit box. They had it, but they couldn't read it. Well, they asked me a lot of questions, but I couldn't tell them anything. Well, I know that. But Ian Devereaux didn't know that, and they all thought that the diary would lead them to the book. Then the Foley's died in the car crash, and the diary is now missing. Skyler, they think that Ian is their best hope toward finding that book, and they want me to help. You? Well, we may have to revise our thinking now that the situation has changed. What do you mean by that? Well, it seems obvious. After what we found in Mr. Whitney's wall safe. Raven, two CEA agents have died because their names were on that paper. Now, whoever is responsible for that paper getting out is responsible for treason and murder. Well, it wasn't Sky. So it must have been Ian. He must have gone up there and stashed those papers in that safe, and it's your job to prove that. We haven't been able to prove anything against Mr. Devereaux, Miss Alexander. That's why we came to you in the first place. And that's why we're going to ask for your help again. Raven. Just what do you think that Raven can do for you? Sky, they want me to get close to Ian and spy on him. This time it won't be just for the sake of the CEA, Miss Alexander. Obviously you have a personal stake now. Let's go to Venus. How about the planet Dog? their own ideas about everything so it's not easy to please them all but i found a way what kind of candy would you like Mania! good i've got that hershey's miniatures lots of individual candy bars for lots of individuals four different chocolate tastes all in one bag hershey's miniatures yeah. now what kind of candy did you want candy. good i've got that Whoa. you are looking at two minds each wishing to become the unchallenged mastermind. These are the tools our masterminds use to try to outmaster one another. This is the board on which our masterminds confront one another. Each player will try to break his opponent's secret code by a master stroke of cunning and logic because they are playing a game that truly earns the name it bears. Mastermind, a masterpiece among games in original advanced and travel versions. Another great challenge from Pressman. On ABC's World News Tonight, American World Cup champion skier Phil Mayer and his twin brother Steve guard each other in pursuit of Olympic gold. I'm not going to let him just beat me, you know, and say, well, okay, go ahead, Phil, I'll be second, that's good enough. ABC News, uniquely qualified to bring you the world. Home video game. Which ones are best? Get a holiday shopper's guide to the cream of the video crop in the new TV Guide. Coming up on the 5 o'clock Eyewitness News, a four-year-old girl is found brutally murdered in New Jersey. Gloria Rojas has some shocking information about the case. We'll also have this report. North Caldwell, New Jersey, a plane in a tree. I'm Lewis Young. I'll talk with the survivors coming up. All right. I knew they'd like it. Chick realizes women come in all shapes and sizes. That's why jeans buy. Chick. 
are proportioned to fit from leg to waist, hip to hip. Whether you're a sweet petite, long and lean, or in between. Don't you know? Chick's got your jeans. Chick jeans. In 27 sizes, because Chick realizes that jeans should come in all shapes and sizes. Now, a $5 rebate on the world's best-fitting jeans. Look who's turning Diet 7 up. Of course. Diet 7 up is crisp and light. Right, Mr. Universe? To me, everything is light. I mean, it doesn't have that heavy aftertaste. To me? Nothing is oh. heavy. <laughs> <laughs> then we're drinking it because we'll give up calories but not taste, right? I won't give up anything. Well, then why are you drinking it? Because Diet 7 Up is delicious. And every time I drink it, mm -hmm. it prickles when it goes down. <laughs> Caffeine free Diet 7 Up. The only thing you give up is calories, right, Arnold? Mmm. <laughs>